What's up? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Lil Donnie from The Wild Bunch. Make sure you go get my book, Wild Bunch, The Dimensions of a Brownsville Millionaire, out now and on Amazon. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share these videos. We're going to talk to some people, you know, always trying to give back and get a little history. So when we put this documentary out, you know what I mean? We be we give y'all some good content that y'all can reminisce. You know, it's all about just trying to inspire people, you know what I mean? Saying, yo, if Lil D could do it, I could do it, you know? If he could write a book, I could write a book. If he could make a movie or tell a story, I could tell you, you know, there's other ways to get some funds besides just running the streets and breaking the law. You know, a lot of us at certain ages, we've been through that. So I know what the guys that's 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, I kind of know what they're going through. Their circumstances ain't exactly like mine, but they're going through stuff and there's probably nobody giving them nothing so they can push forward. You know what I mean? So, you know, like I said, I always trying to holler at people and get some info. We're going to check on some people. You know, I'm always got people calling in and getting a little history for y'all. Let's make a call and see who we got on the line. Let's make a call. Please leave your name. Hold on, they ain't gonna, they gonna call me back. Nah, that phone be acting up. Let's get some people on the line. We're going to get back. I'm going to hit y'all back. We're going to get back with this next person. Okay, so welcome to my show. Um, we're here today. Well, how about you go ahead and introduce yourself? Oh, my name is Lil Donnie from the Wild Bunch. Okay, Lil Donnie. Well, we are here discussing your book. How about you tell them a little bit about your book that you have out? Well, I wrote a book um, about my father. It's called Wild Bunch, The Dimensions of a Brownsville Millionaire. Mm -hmm. He used to be in the streets back in the days. Um, we, we came from the Brownsville, Ocean Hill section of Brooklyn, New York. And, you know, I tried to write from a perspective of, like, if your father was Michael Jordan, right. you don't know the superstar. You just know the father. Right. So, you know, my dad was a big figure in the streets. So I didn't really know that as a kid. You know, I'm his son growing up, baby. But... You know, I, I knew him as dad, you know, right. so stuff I heard about as I got older in the street, it, it I never knew it as being wrong, you know, because I was right. a kid. I just looked at him as dad. So I wrote the book from that perspective, like a love story. Okay, so you describe it as a love story. How about you elaborate on that a little bit? Like I said, the reason why I call it a love story, because I seen the love that he gave to his kids, to his siblings, you know, to other elders, you know, even the game he was playing, it was a lot of cutthroat in that, but I seen that he still had love because some of these people he probably grew up with, they just turned into addicts or whatever. So, you know, that's the love I wanted to give the community, you know, not just to show the killings and the jail. You know, obviously, I'm got to touch on that because I want people would know that I don't want you to do this. I'm not glorifying this. I don't want you to think that becoming a drug kingpin is the way, you know? Right, right. So how was it growing up with your dad, the star? <laughs> well, growing, like I said, growing up with my dad, I didn't know him from that. But I, I you know, because he wasn't, it ain't like he came home and it was really just out on the table where for us to see and know you know, I don't have that story. That my, I, I didn't see a bunch of drugs on the table. I didn't see a bunch of money on the table. You know, he was pretty mysterious about what he did. And I guess that's why he had so long of a run with what he did, because he concealed it. He kept his family separated from his streets. Now, a couple of family members, they might have slipped through the cracks to be part of it, but it was on their own will that, you know, they figured if I'm going to do it, why not do it with, you right. know what I mean? I'm going to go, with, you know, so that's what mostly what I know about that. Right. So is that what you think inspired you to kind of write the book, to give a different perspective? 
Well, what really helped me write the book? Because like I said, I didn't want to just write about drugs and guns and the negative. And I started thinking about how can I help the next person growing up like I did or might be around their family member that's into that life. And, you know, do they want to go into that life or do they want to go to school? You know, so I looked at from that to just show these people you could go another way. You don't have to. Drugs don't got to be your legend, your legacy to be the next drug dealer in your family. Like Michael Jordan kids, they don't got to be the next Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? Just because he played basketball, they don't got to play basketball. And just because he sold drugs don't mean I had to sell drugs. Yes, I tried, but you know Luckily, I woke up and found out it wasn't for me, you know? Right, right. I was going to ask what the impact of his life had on you, um, but I see that you've learned from his quote-unquote mistakes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it took a long time because, yes, I got caught up thinking, oh, I can do it, you know? Right. I can. It's easy, you know, because right. it looks easy when you're just buying drugs, trading it for money, but you ain't seeing the stick-up guys, the police, you ain't thinking about that. And you can't think about it because when you end, you end. So you can't think about the, the pitfalls of it because that's what's probably going to get you caught if you keep thinking about getting caught. Right. You know, but what you should be thinking about is how to use that to get out of it. Because most of the people you hear that was selling drugs that's still on the street, they had an exit plan, whether it was music, sports, whatever. You know what I mean? Just going to school, period. You know, so... It took me a while, but I eventually found the exit plan, and now here I am. You know, like I said, writing a book is a way for me to show the next people behind me that you could write a book. You could you could sell clothes. You know, I got the clothing brand. Right. Um, you could do anything you want. You know what I mean? If you want to play music, you could do it. But it's, you don't got to just be a rapper. You know, you could play jazz. You could play classical. It's, it's other forms you can do. Right. So piggybacking off of that, what's next? I know we have the book, but what's next for Wild Bunch? Well, right now for Wild Bunch, we're working on a documentary. We got the documentary coming out. Um, we got we got some other stuff. You know, it's hard to talk about it until it's right, there. Right. But yeah, don't give far, it too much. Don't yeah, as far as the documentary where you could learn more about the Wild Bunch, right now, like I said, the book is out there. Wild Bunch and Dimensions of a Brownsville Millionaire. That's out there right now on Amazon. Okay. All the clothes is on Shopify, so you know you can go on Shopify and get the clothes. On um, my wild, my own um, Instagram is Wild Bunch Little D. Wild Bunch Little D. I got YouTube okay. videos, you know, Wild Bunch Little D on YouTube. And like I said, just go support. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube and go get that book. Wild Bunch is the mention of a Brownsville Million. They're out now on Amazon. Stay safe out there. Stay safe out there and go get that book. All right. Thank well, you thank so you. much. Yep. Let's see. That was good, right?